<laughs> user engagement is a tricky, tricky beast. You never quite know what the user wants. So you just have to guess and test. And that got me thinking, how can you tell if someone's engaged? You look at the analytics and the amount of time that's spent on the site determines how engaged they are. So what if we make it a little harder for users to lead? Get them a little confused and at the same time, make it fun and engaging. That way we can inflate our analytics. And today we're going to do just that. We're going to create a mouse follower that confuses our audience. With that, let's dive in. So you know that feeling when you were a kid and you lost your mom in a crowd? We want to invoke that same feeling on our site. We'll create a swarm of cursors so the user can't find their mouse and make it hard for the user to do anything on our site. And in turn, the time the user spent on our site is going to shoot through the roof. First, we need to figure out how we're going to swarm our cursors together. In this example done by Ben Eater, he's using the Boyd's algorithm. And this was actually done for a Smarter Everyday video. You want to check that out. Reading up on Boyd's on Wikipedia, there's three rules that need to be applied to kind of make this work. There's separation, alignment, and cohesion. Now, if you ever walked with a group of friends on the sidewalk, these rules apply as well. So separation, you want to keep your personal distance from your friends. So if you're walking down the street, you don't want to be stepping on your friend's toes. So you have to keep a minimum distance. And then alignment, you all want to walk in the same direction. And cohesion, you want to stay within the pack. So you don't want to be too far out of the pack. You don't want to be walking by yourself. You want to be walking with your friends. So now we just have to write something that implements these three rules. So I decided not to develop it myself and use the 10x developer way. And that is to see if someone else did it already. And sure enough, there's a void npm package, which looks simple enough to implement. Before we get into implementing the voids, we need the structure of our site first. So I just imported a CSS file, imported a JS file, and I added this div with a class of mouse for our cursor, which is going to follow our mouse cursor around. Jumping into styles, we're going to hide our mouse cursor and replace it with a image of a cursor. That way we can ensure that our mouse always looks like the rest of our swarm. So for the first bit, we hide our cursor. Then for the div with a class of mouse, we then add a position of absolute. We add the image of our cursor and we specify the width and height. And then we give it a Z index. And we also give it a drop shadow because I'm not sure if you noticed, but your cursor generally has a bit of a drop shadow to it. Jumping into our JavaScript, we have an events listener for when the mouse moves. And then we're just querying for that div that we created. And we're adjusting the left and top styles to point to the mouse's X and Y. So now when we go to our site, it looks like a regular mouse on our screen, but it's actually an image that's just following our or mess around. So now we need a container to hold our swarm. And we're just gonna create a div and give it a class of void container and then append it to the body. So we can start our swarm now, but the first thing we need is a, a loop. So I created this update function, which makes a call to the request animation frame. And then that will call this function whenever a animation frame is available. And then we kick that off. So anything in here is gonna be looping. Now we're ready to use that void npm package. So we can import it. And if you look at the index.html, you'll see that it's type module. That's why I can import it this way. Now how the void npm package works is you require a target for the swarm to flock to. They, they fly towards a target. So what we're gonna do is inside of our mouse move, we're going to update the target whenever the mouse moves to point to the current X and Y of the mouse. Now that we have the target always pointing to our mouse, we need to initialize the swarm itself. And so I'm gonna create a, a variable called flockers. And then underneath our div, I'm gonna loop through those flockers. And I've created a couple of variables here. This max cursor, max speed, max force, and mass. These are all constants that affect how the swarm is going to fly. We're just looping through until we have the max amount of cursors. We're creating a new void called flocker. And then we set the bounds. This just defines the area that the swarm can fly in. Position X and position Y is just a starting spot. And we're just picking a random spot on the screen. 
we're setting the max speed, the max force, and the mass. And then the edge behavior is what happens when it reaches the edge of your bounds. And for this, we say it's going to bounce off. And lastly, we're going to create a div with a class of cursor. And then we're going to append that to our container, our void container that we created up here. And lastly, we're going to push it to the flockers. So that'll give us an array of 100 voids that we can then point towards our target. Back in our loop, now we can make the magic happen. First, we'll just want to make sure that the target exists. Because if we haven't moved the mouse yet, then we don't want to actually run any of this stuff. Once we're certain that we have a target, we're going to loop through our flockers. Each one is going to be named void, and we're also going to have an index. And then we specify the flock that the void belongs to, which is all of our other void elements. And then we seek towards the target that we update with the mouse move. And then we update. And once we update, we're, we have access to this void.position, which gives us an XY coordinate of where the void should be at that point in time. So then we get our cursor from our void containers children. We reference the index. So the first item that in the flockers is going to be the first item in our void container. And then in our cursors, we have adjust the top and left to point to the point Y and point X, which was specified by our void position. At this point, we'll have a bunch of cursors falling around our mouse. When I go to the browser, it's missing all the cursors. And that's just because we don't have any CSS adding the images to the cursors we created. So let's do that. So inside of our CSS, we can add a cursor. It's pretty well the same as the mouse one. We have our absolute position, width and height, we're specifying the image. The only thing that's different is this transition all, and this will change transform. Uh, this is just to smooth out the movement. I found the movement kind of spastic a little bit, so this transition all just gives it a nice smooth movement. And this will change transform. It's just to ensure that it uses your GPU instead of your CPU, because it can be quite labor intensive. We're doing a lot of redraws here. And this is just an attempt to make it a little more smooth. If we save this up and go to our browser, it's not working. Uh, and this is just because our void container is only so tall. It's, it, it doesn't take up the whole height of the page. We can quickly fix this by giving a height and width to our HTML body, make sure it's 100%. And then our void container is also 100%. So when we save it up, now we have something that follows our mouse around. Right now the mouse looks like a cursor from a Mac. Now we want to make sure that Windows users aren't left out. They have a white cursor usually. So we'll get into that now. So first let's create a constant called isWindows. And we can set that to true or false. In this case we'll set it to true. And then we can add a class to our body. That just specifies if it's Windows, we're going to add this Win class to it. So then in the CSS, we just add this, and then we're updating the mouse and the cursor with a new image. So if we save this up now, now we have a white cursor. And if we swap back to false, switches back to a black cursor. Feel free to play around with these constants to see what they do. Like as an example, I were to add more cursors. Oh man, where's my mouse? Let's set this to a more respectable number. And let's try adjusting the mass. Oh man, it's like a swarm of bees. Where is my mouse? Anyway, play around, see what you like. I find for my computer, for speed-wise, it's around 50 or 60 cursors that will keep it fast. Just a note about this project, it's not very performant. It's just because I'm modifying the DOM every time it has to move a point. Realistically, I, I could use a, a canvas and it would be a lot faster. My initial thought was to create a cursor that you can put on top of any website. In hindsight, I didn't actually do that, but that was my initial thinking to doing it on the DOM. Just one last thing I want to try on this project. Might take a bit, so please hold. 
Spooky, I'm back. That took a bit. So I took some time and thought about how can I make this a little more realistic? And what came to mind is farting in a crowd. So if you keep your mouse still, you click, they all look at you, you get embarrassed and you blame it on someone else. But play around with it, fork it, see what you can come up with. This mess followed by no means is practical in any way or form. If you want a more practical one, we, I did a video just not too long ago, so you can check that out. I plan on doing more creative stuff like this in the future. If you're interested in that kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you next time.